The next major storm uh, to hit was a September storm, 1919. It was a uh, storm and it came south past south of uh, Key West and it was probably a category four storm. Now you'll see that when you look in the books, this is one of the most deadly storms in the Atlantic hurricane history. Over 300 people died. Well, they don't always explain it, so Key West, 300 people died. But what the 300 people were, were passengers on a Spanish liner named the Balvaneras. This was a regularly run uh, Spanish steamship line that would leave from, you know, hit several Spanish ports, usually Canary Islands, uh, Puerto Rico, and in fact, this ship had come to Cuba and gone to San Diego, Cuba, uh, on the south coast, and was en route to Havana, and it was turned away <clears throat> at uh, the port of Havana because they arrived just as the storm was hitting. No trace was heard of it uh, for nine days. Nine days later, uh, the Navy found the wreckage out to the west of here uh, in an area called the Quicksands, uh, Half Moon Shoals. And uh, the report that they had uh, was no survivors, uh, in which there were no survivors. I, the question always has come up in my mind. This was a small patrol craft that had uh, a 10 to 12 man crew. They had been out there working for nine days, uh, helping ships that are stranded on the reef and so forth, because it had caused a number of shipwrecks. And so they came up on a ship that had been wrecked for nine days, full of bodies and 300 bodies and you've got a 10-man crew that had been overworked. Now, they said no bodies. I always suspected the captain turned to the executive officer and said, do you see any bodies? And I said, no, sir, as he looked the other way. Uh, but we don't know. But anyway, that's created a number of legends. Uh, one, supposedly, this was a ship loaded with prostitutes uh, no record of that. Actually, we know a lot of the passengers, who they were, their passenger ship list and so forth. And it was would have gone to Havana, and then eventually they went on to uh, New Orleans. And it was a regular, like I said, regular ship. In fact, a couple years later, that's how Mr. Hemingway arrived in Key West. He took the Spanish liner from Spain to Cuba and then caught the uh, uh, ship from Havana to Key West to come to Key West, so it was a regular one. But there's also the ship of the uh, the prostitutes, and it's and of course the old timers said it was a haunted wreck out there. And I'm sure afterwards they were finding stuff, and supposedly Hemingway wrote a little bit about it. Uh, I don't know if there's any ghosts there. I fished on that wreck a couple of times back in the old days. I never saw any ghosts though. I did catch a big permit out there one time. First permit, I caught a big one too. I got a picture of that somewhere, I think, on the website. A number of these wrecks, uh, we have written up different articles about them, um, about the ship or the hurricane in the Key West uh, Maritime Historical Key Sea Heritage Journal, Key Sea Heritage Journal. Uh, most of them are online. Hopefully all of them will be shortly, but they're all mostly online, so if you want more, uh, I know we've got the Barbaneras and the, the, about its last voyage, uh, a, a number of reports, some of the military reports on the, the various hurricanes and stuff are available there. Uh, but uh, that's the biggest loss of life up until later, till the big storm, Labor Day storm. And it was almost everybody uh, that died was uh, on the ship. And there was no, no record of anybody ever being found. The next big event uh, in uh, the uh, history of hurricanes 
in May of 1922, the uh, people of Key West erected a grotto in recognition of Sister Louis Gabriel, who had been uh, at the convent of Mary Immaculate uh, since the 18, early 1890s. And her prayer at the dedication in May of 1922 was that as long as the grotto remains standing, that Key West be protected from the ravages of of a, uh, of a major hurricane, uh, and so, so far, she's held good, but more on that later. Uh, another one that uh, didn't affect, hit Key West directly was the uh, September 1926 storm hit Miami, did some damage in the Upper Keys, particularly to the first highway that was being built and opened in 28. But the big damage it did was economic. It ended the Florida land boom. And it was, for Key West, the last vintage of a major industry. As everything had happened, the cigar factories had closed, the railroad had cut back shipping to Cuba because of uh, some international treaties and so forth. So it, I look on September 26th as the beginning of the Great Depression in uh, Key West. Not that day, but it was the event that started it. And then, of course, we go up to uh, uh, the Labor Day hurricane in 1935. And it did have a high uh, uh, death rate, 400 plus people. We really don't know. He, they had brought a lot of uh, veterans that they wanted to run out of Washington, D.C. down to theoretically <clears throat> work on building a, finishing the overseas highway, putting the bridges in where we had the ferry. And, uh, but they were bad boys and we actually had to have the National Guard uh, here to guard their camp for a number of months prior to the 35 storm, but they were a bad one. It has been well documented. We have in the collection here uh, three books written about the 35 hurricane, and all of them have a little something different. And a Storm of the Century uh, by Willie Dreyer, excellent book, uh, and focuses a lot on the uh, technical of the weather and so forth. Uh, Thomas Knowles' Category 5 is another one, and he adds more human element to it, particularly the local human element. Uh, and uh, so each one of these adds something uh, to the overall story. The other one is the Hemingway's Hurricane. I think the guy used that name to increase sales, putting Hemingway's name on it. But it's a good account of the 35. And he brings some stuff into view that neither the other two had brought in. Now, Hemingway did uh, uh, go visit the Upper Keys after the 35 hurricane and wrote an article that became very controversial, blaming the administration for the that the, he was anti-New uh, Deal, anyway, very much. And the title of the art article was Who Killed the Vets? Blaming the, the administration in Washington. Um, but uh, on our website, again, there's some photographs, some real grisly photographs of some of the bodies and some of the damage of the 35 that was taken by somebody on the boat with Hemingway. Uh, we're not sure who all was on there. Broad Saunders was the captain, Hemingway. Uh, Toby had said he, he, he had them, but I don't think he took them because he didn't arrive supposedly until January of 36. So he wasn't on, I don't think he was on the trip, and I'm not sure who all was. 
I'm sure some Hemingway guys figured out who all was on there. But anyway, those are photos on our uh, uh, our website. And it was, the, this is the hurricane. It changed a lot of thinking about the hurricane. The first, in fact, it's the first time that there's any uh, uh, talk of evacuation. They were setting up a plan to evacuate the WPA workers from the Keys in case of another hurricane. But in their case, they were evacuating to Key West, not away. So, major storm. You want to read these three books? It's interesting. Uh, it was one of those where everybody made the decision. It wasn't wrong, but it wasn't the best decision they could have made. So you just keep getting, building these all up. First, putting the veterans here, how they handle them, how they were going to evacuate them. It's, it's all very interesting. And then, of course, it all came unglued because none of it worked at the end of taking care of the reason we lost so many people. And we don't know how many. We know that some veterans survived and just walked away. The uh, next uh, storm uh, we had <coughs> was October 44. It, uh, of course, came right in the middle of the war. We had all sorts of wartime activity. In fact, most of the damage done was to the military activity. A number of small ships were, went aground and so forth, but not a major damage on the island itself, but a lot of damage to military equipment. Uh, again, we had one in 40, October 48, another Category 3. Uh, again, no major damage in Key West and no deaths in either one of those storms. The uh, next uh, big storm was uh, Hurricane Donna. 1960. The Middle Keys again, a little south of the Labor Day storm, uh, and went up the East Coast. In fact, I, as a young sailor, I rode out the uh, Hurricane Donna in Newport, Rhode Island. Uh, it went right up the whole East Coast, but it did major damage a marathon in the Middle Keys. The loss of life was they estimated about 50 people total died in that because they were more, they were ready, they had warnings. In fact, the radio station, the WKD, WF, our first radio station, started broadcasting with broadcasting warnings about Hurricane Donna. They would come on the line about every, I think, 15 minutes and give an update on the thing. So it was the, the first like we have now where we got the Weather Channel and all these people telling us about it. It was uh, Mr. John Spotswood coming on every 15 minutes and giving an update was their storm coverage on that one. Uh, and now, of course, uh, starting in World War II, uh, they started naming the storms. Before, you'll see Labor Day Storm 35 didn't have a name. Uh, the military started because the, there would be several storms and confusion between the different stations and so forth. They started naming them. Originally, they named them after the phonetic alphabet, Alpha, Bravo, Charlie. But of course, that doesn't change, so the next year you're going to have Alpha, Bravo, and Charlie. So then they started naming them at that time for women. And so Donna was 1960, so that's the first major storm that has a name. Thank <laughs> you.